Hey nerds, this is the Pretty Nerds Podcast. Let's get into it. Now point your fingers up to the sky and talk through your nose way up high. Spin and dip and jump and gerbort and finish it off with a laugh and snort. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the Pretty Nerds Podcast. This is your girl Fallon Deanne. And this is your girl Nay. How's everything been going? Pretty good. Um, not too bad on my side. I um, I brought, so I was watching on like YouTube or something like that. I think it's YouTube. Well, the little Facebook part of YouTube where you can like watch the little YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. And I was watching one of those little skincare people. And they mentioned those little zit stickers um, that are like in the little shapes and stuff that you can buy. And I found some at Target. Let me tell you, them shits really work. Like Are those are the ones that like come in the different skin tone. I think I seen someone use it with like makeup. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I got um I got them from Target and they're like in the shape of little stars. And so it's like a little sticker and you put it on your pimple. And like, you just leave it on there. And like, literally, like I had a pimple because I only get acne um, when it's getting close to the time of the month. And so, um, but I got like one little pimple on my chin. So I put, um, I put the little sticker on there, girl, literally overnight, things gone. Hmm, I need to try those. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. I was like, at first I was like, cause I watched it on the little YouTube and the little skincare guy was like, I know you're going to say it doesn't work, but I'm telling you these little things where I was like, yeah, I don't believe y'all. That's too easy. <laughs> but literally, man, I saw them in, in Target and they were like on a little sale. And I was like, nah, why not give them a try? And it's like a big, I got like, um, it's like a little small box. You don't think it has a lot in there, but it has like sheets and sheets and sheets of them in there. And like one sticker left it on overnight, boom, next day. And I'm like, oh, okay. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what about yourself? Everything's been going good. Um, just enjoying summer. Um, pretty much it. Ready for vacation as always. But yeah. Where are you going on vacation this year? Um, I know we're supposed to go to New York. So yeah, I that's about it. And I'm trying to figure out where I want to go for my birthday. I'm not sure. Really want to go to Cabo. I want to go to St. Lucia. Either one of the uh, Virgin Islands. I don't know. <laughs> oh, correct. <girl. laughs> <laughs> I just want to be poolside, sipping on like some strong alcohol. And yeah. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and jump into this week's <laughs> topics. Um, we could start really light and then kind of move into the not so light stuff. These two were just left over from last week. I saw that um, Victoria's Secrets now is doing a rebrand, I guess, trying to be more inclusive. They've got like celebrity women like um, Megan Rapoport, um, the U.S. soccer player. They have uh, uh, Prinka Chopra Jonas. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, I just know her from when she played uh, the FBI agent on that show and that she married a Jonas brother. But so y'all, if y'all think about it that way, y'all y'all will remember her as well. Anyway, but yeah, so they're like the new kind of faces of it, trying to be more all-inclusive of every gender, different types of women. Essentially, they've retired the angel brand or retired the whole angel wings situation no longer are they just using models as like the spokesperson everything because the brand essentially has been failing and this is their attempt at a rebrand to bring them out of I guess failure bankruptcy I don't know because I mean even even the Victoria's Secret do y'all even have a Victoria our Victoria's Secret like literally only opens I think maybe one or two days out of the week like that's how far they've fallen off I know. I think we only have one left here. One. I mean, even in the quote-unquote upscale good mall, it's gone. I don't. 
like it's crazy because it's like who did the research for you and it, I, it's just me but I'm like there's really nothing wrong with the angel branding I think that made you say that it was probably more of the price the sizing than anything like because you have companies like Adore Me, Fashion Nova um she, and I can't think of a company that um, they sell lingerie on Forever 21, but it's the same thing. And it's like half of the price. So it's like, where are you going with this? <laughs> like, I I think the Angel branded was fine. It's just uh, the other part. And it's like, you remember like when it was celebrated that they had a girl on there that was like, had thicker thighs. It's like, right. <laughs> Right. I think that was their downfall. It was their their lack of being able to read the room in terms of bodies, um, body shape. And like you said, their sizing has always been suspect. It's just always been suspect. Ever since I can remember their sizing as far as like even in their bras, everything has just been suspect. So yeah. But it's gonna be interesting to see. I still don't see. Like, I mean, I see a line when I do go to the mall, but I'm pretty sure that's more because of the pandemic and you can't have too many people in the store. But I don't know. Like I said, it's going to be interesting to see because even with the pink brand, this shit is expensive. Like I bought my cousin an outfit and I was like, for some sweatpants? And that's, that's the truth. <laughs> it's very, it is expensive like I only go in there to shop every blue moon I'll go in yeah. if I have like a coupon or something I'll yeah. buy something out of there because like I don't get me wrong I love like their yoga pants and stuff like that but them shits is high for some yoga pants I'd be like I'd go to Old Navy and get some cheaper than this yeah. and I that's fuck with Old Navy yoga pants them shits is fine You're like look at my booty <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care but yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, it's going to be interesting to see. But I doubt if that really pulls them. Unless they, they yeah, it's going to have to be major. Yeah, unless they change. I'm telling they're going to have to do better with their sizing and the pricing. Their pricing is just way too fucking high. Yeah. To compete with everybody else. Especially like you said, there's so much fast fashion now online with the, like you said, Adore Me what is Rihanna's brand? Savage by Fenty. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? There's just so many, there's too many different avenues now for people to to shop on. So we'll see if the rebrand works. I don't know. We'll see. That's all I can say on that one. Yeah. Also, this happened, what, last week where they signed Juneteenth into a federal holiday and made it a federal holiday. I will say it's one of those situations where it's like I'm not mad at it but it's not enough for me it don't yeah. it don't you know what I mean like I ain't mad I'm definitely I'm glad that it's a recognized as a federal holiday I'm definitely glad that people are talking about it but at the same time it's like it's not enough for me like it still isn't what we asked for I still ain't seen y'all vote or start to bring up the bill for reparations I still haven't seen I saw that Asian Americans had a hate crime and literally almost what in two maybe three weeks they got a hate crime bill passed mm -hmm. I saw you know what I'm saying where's our bill I, you know what I'm saying I'm still seeing the same situations with police brutality in the streets like what's what, when is that going to be addressed I see y'all May Juneteenth the holiday but but y'all are still having schools ban critical race theory, which y'all went through all these barriers to have actual states outlaw and ban it. Like I, hmm, I don't know. So like I said, I'm, I'm not mad at Juneteenth being a holiday. I'm just, it's just not enough for me. And I also don't like the fact that you have places like Georgia with their ridiculous ass governor who actually banned they they even though it's a federal holiday he, he said that his state employees if they take the day off won't be paid it's fucking ridiculous true fashion <sighs> true fashion and, I, and when you think about it and we always like of course we pinpoint things um to i guess blame people but even when you think about like being a being an employee in that type of environment that this is a federal holiday 
And because you have so much hatred in your heart, because it's probably what it is. He's a racist. Because you're a racist, you're like, oh, I'm not going to be here. I'm like, people are now walking out from jobs for this and saying like, I don't have to take this. I'm like, just, you know, adding to the conversation. I was like, and then you got to think about in the state of Georgia, yeah, it's a Republican state, but it's a lot of black ass people there. Facts. Like, let's not get, and especially when you think about the capital and where the capital is, black ass people. So you're basically telling black ass people, oh, on June 19th, you can't take off. But what did you lie spot? So I just, it just irks me because, and I mean, even with Candace Owens, black ass, um, get on there as like, I'm American, so I'm going to celebrate July 4th. Girl, you were not free July 4th, uh, 1776. Let's just get it clear. You were not. No matter how much you want to get on here in front with these white people, you were not free. Not even close. Facts. And I'm liking if we just really, you know, just digging into it a little deeper, shit, you really weren't free when night 1865 you had sharecropping okay. you went to Jordan pro and here we are today like still having the same conversations so like and i said like totally agree with you like i'm not mad about it i'm not mad that it's a federal holiday i guess just like where is everything else we act? like we didn't ask you for that like it's cool you know what i'm saying like but we ain't asked you for it. This is what we actually need. That was a want that's like, you know, okay, we can make that happen at the end. But right now we have crucial things that we are asking you for. We're asking you for viable job opportunities, reparations, better schools, better teachers, better resources, clean water. And you're like, nope, we're just going to put a step on it or put a bandaid over this big ass open wound and we're going to give you Juneteenth as a holiday. And you should be grateful for it. Like, no. And then when you think about it, it's like, so what would the kids learn at school on or learn about Juneteenth? Like, lucky enough, which is crazy, is that they won't be in school for it. So you don't have to worry about whitewashing. Okay. Listen. Because with critical <laughs> race theory, you know, that was the big conversation was like, oh, it's going to make white people uncomfortable. You should be because black people still navigate this world uncomfortable as fuck. The fact that we got a code switch or we got to have a, you know, bring down the cadence or the pitch or tone in our voice to be appeasing to you. Be uncomfortable. You fine. And why are you uncomfortable? If you quote unquote, I didn't own any slaves, but well, why are you uncomfortable then? Exactly. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a tough conversation to have. It shouldn't be that's the that's the thing about the whole situation that I don't understand where they where you know you see on all these news channels with folks talking about now it's tr- they're trying to make white people feel bad for being white huh we trying to make you feel bad for being white by what talking about history like it's a part of your history like you got I mean just like all of us got to own shit you know what I'm saying you got to own that shit that's a part of y'all history you know what I'm saying y'all want to y'all want us to push down our throats and have us learn in school about how you know that they came over and fought the British from and you know took America and blah 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 and we had to learn about the Louisiana Purchase and all this shit all this stuff essentially shit where y'all was basically robbing and pillaging and raping a whole community of people that was already here but y'all had to prop that up and make us learn about it like it was some type of type of big feat instead of being honest about it and telling the truth yeah we stole this shit from folks we colonized i mean that's what it is that's the truth spanish acquisition listen like all of this the expansion out west all like manifest destiny all of this stuff is like bro you literally just came in and popped your ass on land that want yours and like here we are and we learned about that and we learned lies think about being a native american and saying okay you discovered fuck you discovered something we was already here flourishing facts like how do you do that exactly think of being a native american and having to sit in school and listen to people praise christopher columbus like 
but but white folks can't be uncomfortable with by by knowing truths like i don't understand all the rest of us gotta sit and be uncomfortable with lies you're saying the truth and like again if you are so you you because like i said there's you said i didn't own slaves i didn't do that blah, blah blah well if you didn't do all of this what are you uncomfortable that's my whole big what are you uncomfortable about sweetheart why are you uncomfortable why exactly should be easy because you know it's some bullshit mm-hmm. it's of some bullshit because you know you're no better today than what you were yesterday 100 years ago 200 400 years ago it's no better so that's the reason why you're uncomfortable Facts. and you don't want to face the fact that listen i'm still part of a system that still does the same thing that my ancestors done thank what listen but it's just it's no longer deemed appropriate i guess or it's looked down upon because some people still think it's appropriate to take your children to watch a black man being lynched and burned it's no longer seen as you know the it thing to do but your grandparents did your great grandparents did so facts. yeah mm. facts okay the fact that it was such a hassle for them to remove nathan bedford forrest's statue out of a city knowing that he was a founder of the biggest one of the biggest hate groups and you know terrorist organizations in the world i.e the kkk the fact that that was even a debate should let y'all know you know what I'm saying? Listen, like the it's state. like <laughs> they have like tarp and fencing up and all of this stuff and it's like listen and again just off topic my mom we was talking about it she's from a generation i feel like that kind of let king legacy slip um and we kind of just know him as oh being you know nonviolent, peaceful whereas that wasn't i don't think that was his only deal or um push for change but anywho she was like well i don't see anything wrong with it being there and that man dead and gone okay he needs to be gone I said, there's a constant reminder that he's there. And for people, I was like, you have to think about there are people still in this city today that are still hurt by his policies, the the organization that he, you know, was over. I was like, there are people that are still living. I'm like, you have to think about this. I think last year they just buried the last sanitation worker. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, we're still reeling from the effects of racism we're always going to be in that place he does need to be removed and I was like just going back so I was like you don't see Jewish people walking around happy that oh they're going to heal their statue no get that shit out of here I'm like there are Nazis that are fucking dead they're still being prosecuted okay listen I was like for me I just I don't get it and for me it was get the shit out of here like I don't want to fucking see it when I figured out what the fuck it was, and so many times I went past that park, and then when I figured out who the fuck it was, I'm like, oh, he can go. And it was just the statue. Like, he was literally on a horse with, like, a stake or something like that. I'm like, yeah, he gotta go. Exactly. Remove that shit ASAP, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Listen. Family plot. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on. Now, this one we didn't have on the list, but I wanted to bring it up now just because we were in this topic um, about Black liberation, about Black folks, reparations, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason I want to bring it up is just because of the bigger or the broader topic that it raises, not the necessarily the situation itself, but the broader topic. So if you've been following on social media, one of the biggest stories has been Michael B. Jordan's brand of rum that he was releasing. Um, It was named after a festival in Trinidad and Tobago that takes place, obviously, every year. Everybody knows about it, Carnival, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the word that he used for the brand is essentially the word that they use for their celebration in Trinidad Tobago. It raised a lot of questions. A lot of people were calling him a cultural appropriator. You know, a lot of people in the islands were upset, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So I wanted to talk about this topic for two reasons. One, I just wanted to see your thoughts on, you know, the him naming the brand that as well as the ideas behind it, people saying, well, he had a partner who's from Trinidad, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then I also want to talk about the broader topic about Black Americans consistently being accused of cultural appropriation by other aspects of the diaspora. Yet for us, whenever, when with our, we're, with our culture, we're told, well, everybody's Black and you have to share it. But whenever other parts of the diaspora have something and we, I guess, partake in it, we're considered cultural appropriators. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? My thoughts are when I saw it, I was like, honestly, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I, it's, and the reason why I say what the fuck, and I always, this is going to sound hard, like, but I don't care. When it comes down to Caribbean and African people, it irks me and boils my fucking blood how fucking anti-Black American they are. Like, I don't give a fuck. You can call it what it is. Like, I see it on the fucking internet. If it's any issue and people like, you know, we come in on it, it's like, well, Black Americans need to worry about this. And we're like, you got the same fucking shit going on. We battle the same fucking things. But I felt like with the word, I was like, first of all, when they was like, oh, he has a business business partner from Trinidad. I'm like, that explains it. He's, you, I was like, you have to think about like, he's the face of the brand because he's known. So you think about Ciroc and, you know, Rick Ross with the bamboo and the Bel Air. It doesn't actually, you know, he may have a stake in it or something like that. But he's the face of the brand because he's known. He didn't purposely benefit from your culture and like oh we're taking something from you and then on top of that when you wear it I'm like when you go to Trinidad I'm pretty sure it's a lot of a lot of influences that you guys have now that are from black Americans and I'm like even when Nicki Minaj and I love her made the statement was like oh I'm pretty sure that I will be changed I'm like but we welcome you into hip-hop with open arms and this is something black and out even in some of the like blog comments like I did appreciate what black people was like you know black Americans like we always like you said we always share what we have always it's like okay we're because we're tall okay you look like you're black that's how I'm going to treat you but when it comes down to black Americans it's like oh you gotta stop because you know, your cultural approach. And even when they were giving, like, I don't know if you saw the post, I know Shade Room had it up, where this person goes into all of this and this is what, you know, when happened with slave, blah, blah. I'm like, you act like, to be honest, they act like they're talking to white people. Like we were not slaves. Right. Like their whole explanation, like it just really rubbed me the wrong way. Like I get it. There is history behind it. There's history behind a, a lot of shit that black people do, the way that we eat, we walk, we speak. There's history behind it. I'm like, but for you to get on the internet and make it like this whole big hoopla deal, I'm like, we can't say words, we can't wear certain things because, oh, you're appropriate and you're appropriate. Bro, we're literally the same fucking people and we don't ever go in. And this is one thing I do hate about black America, well, not hate, that I think we should make people more. Listen, no, you're not going to step in. You're not going to do this because I'm like, they gatekeep. And they gatekeep tough as fuck where they are literally willing to be like, okay, listen, no, you're Black American. You don't belong in our culture. And I'm like, what is wrong with us saying the same fucking thing and putting out, if we're going to do it that way and we're, oh, we're in this island and we're different from you and we're different like that. Okay, well then that's fine. We're going to gatekeep what we have. And we, I think it's, for us is that we have to know that like listen we give a lot not even to just America to the fucking world I'm like it shows right now on TikTok that there are black dancers that have taken a hiatus and they don't know what the fuck to do on TikTok right and you can bet most of those dances that were invented came from what black Americans Mm -hmm. so it's just like it like I said it irks me always to see that shit is like bro we're literally a fucking stop away from each other and y'all act like we're worlds apart or that we're so much different or something like that 
Like I appreciate Michael B. Jordan, I'm pretty sure just to keep down the hoopla, he went ahead and was like, okay, we're going through a name change. But I mean, I ain't feel no type of way about the shit. Like, whatever. So for me, when I saw the situation, I said two things. My question, I had questions about it. I was like, okay, I get that it's a it's a cultural world, it's part of a culture, et cetera, et cetera. But then the, a lot of the explanation was that, well, he has a Trini partner. And so I was like, oh, okay. Well, Michael B. Jordan, of course, is going to be the face up because, I mean, he's the name. So, but if his partner is from Trinidad, then I don't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't see like the big controversy, but at the same time, it's like, okay, I, I'm not from the islands. So I removed myself out of it. And I said, you know what? That's, it's their culture. They're allowed to do that. I respect it. So if they felt away, I'm not going to jump in there and say, you can't feel away, feel away. But I'm with, at the same time, it really, it, it was another one of those instances where it made me think it was similar to the thing with Beyonce when she had the Beyonce is King thing mm-hmm. where, uh, or something is King. What was it? Black, is King. Black is King. When she had that and that was, there was a whole hoopla about her in Africa, people saying that she culture appropriated African culture. And it was like, despite the fact that she literally took, you know, used her own money, went to Africa, chose all African artists, um, worked with all African, you know what I mean? Just put the whole project, you know, immersed it in African culture and African people, all the people behind it were part, you know what I mean? Like, I, despite the, all of that, I was like, okay, whatever. I'll remove myself from it. Y'all are entitled to your feelings. But it was just another one of those reminders. Like, okay, when it comes to the, the diaspora, yes, we are all Black. And at the, there are certain instances where we have to move together in order to get anywhere. But at the same time, I think that Black Americans, we have to come out of this concept or this idea of, we are all one or we are all the same. Um, I am 100% with you in the sense that we have to gatekeep. I feel like out of everybody, we the only ones who don't gatekeep. Even like, even look at the whole, oh, you invited to the cookout bullshit. Like I hate that situation. I hate that. Oh, he invited to, the- no, no, we not doing that. Um, but that's, but I fully wholeheartedly 100% agree with you in that we have to gatekeep more. And I think that for a lot of us, when it comes to gatekeeping, I think that um, we were we were more like, well, when it comes to other black folks, like you said, we just, you black, so I'm black, we, it's whatever, it's cool. But now seeing when we see from Africans and from you know the Caribbean and all of that, that even when it comes to us, they will gatekeep. I think that that has to be a wake up call for Black Americans to be like, oh, okay, okay. So in some instances, we got to gatekeep from y'all asses too. When it comes to our culture, the things that we created that came from us, we got to gatekeep too. And I and I'm sorry. I think that that includes, like you said, hip hop. Hip hop came from our streets. That was birthed in our cities and our in our ghettos and our out of our problems that came from the United States that came from our pain that was something that we created the same thing like you said with African-American vernacular English that's our you know what I'm saying we created that that comes from us and I told y'all like I, that shit irks my nerves when I see them throwing around woke on tv like I'd be wanting to jump through the tv screen and 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 pop somebody in their mouth like I saw the other day um, I was in the gym and I saw um, that there's like an Indian guy who wrote a book talking about woke culture and shit like that. And I was like, the fuck? What you mean? Like, you not even... Child, look. So I just feel like I'm, I'm with you. It really, for me, it was an eye opener in that we just got to gatekeep. It, and we can, we can no longer move in the mentality that we, you know what I'm saying, just because you black and I'm black, that we on the same page. And just thinking about it, I was like, I wonder if we do it like more of a connection because it's like, okay, we're literally here alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least we can do this together where it's everybody else is like, no, I'm willing to do it alone. And we, because even when you look at it, I think Black Americans have this sense of 
You know, we can do some BS, but I think we have a sense of, listen, if we go with this together, we will get more done. You know, even if we fight amongst each other, amongst each other, if we go at this together for the most part, you know what I'm saying? We we can get it done. Whereas I think, I don't know, I feel like with the Allens and after it's more of, okay, I just need to get by or I need to survive. Whereas here it's like, listen, even growing up in the ghetto, we didn't go hungry because if somebody had a whole bucket of something, everybody ate. Like I hear like my, just Julian talking about like being from Jamaica and it's like, I can't even think of like even being in the hood because in the hood, if one person had something, everybody ate. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna keep all of my resources for myself because I don't know when I'm eating again. It was like, let me share this because if I don't have it tomorrow, somebody else might have it tomorrow and then they gonna share with me tomorrow. And then, you know, that next person gonna have it the next day. And we all eat every day. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, if we don't grow up being on individualism, I guess you could say. We grow up with the collective spirit. And it's kind of more for them, it's like individual, like I'm Jamaican, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it's just it's just one, I think that for a lot of people, it should start being an eye-opener that even, like you said, that we have to gatekeep. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I think you and I both have been have said it multiple times that we can't stand that whole you invited to the cookout shit. But I, I, I didn't even go to the cookout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that. And, and listen, every time y'all invite somebody to the cookout, quote unquote, it turn around, they ain't shit. And then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go back and renege that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh boy, what is it, Michael Rapport, whatever his name is, trash. Trash. Invited to the cookout. She trash. Listen, Gary Owen ass trash. Listen. <laughs> throw his whole, throw him all the fuck away. Whole career is built on profiting off of the fact that you married a black woman and then got the audacity to be out here trying to come at her because she mad. Well, shit, she should be mad, nigga. She put up with, I'm sorry, listen, you ain't even a nigga now. She should be mad because you put up with your ass for, all, your corny ass at that for Ooh. all these years. And and was getting cheated on, by the way, because it's legendary how much Gary Owen used to cheat on her. And was getting cheated on. And then you got the audacity to get on the Wendy show and like, it's not what she trying to make it seem. You know, people, I've been checked out in the marriage longer than her. So she made so all that lets people know when he said that to me. Oh, so you was cheating. That's why right. you've been checked out of the marriage. And if you check out physically, Negro, you need to be well, not Negro. Asshole, you need to be checked out all the way. Exactly. All the way. Exactly. And he talked, he, he just don't want to come up off no coins. I hope right. sis gets something. I hope she gets something because literally his whole career was built off the back of you, sis. That's exactly what I'll put it. His whole he wouldn't have a comedy. What 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 jokes he gonna tell? Listen, and the jokes that he got literally when I went to see him, I was like, oh Lord. I was literally counting like the little openings in the ceiling. Like, I was not amused at all. Okay, listen, mess. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some more mess. Nick Cannon situation. I, I mean, it's not really necessarily a situation. Obviously, again, we just spitballing and talking shit um but nick cannon has yet another on uh was it father's day he confirmed that he has yet another baby on the way i mean listen he has every right to go out and procreate with however many people he wants to procreate but i think we just should at the end of the day stop call a spade a fucking spade nick cannon trash he for the streets i mean He can get up there and 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 talk all the the I love my black queens and and we kings and blah blah. But he can get out there and speak all the rhetoric he want to. But the main photo streets and he trash and and I see a lot of people now trying to show that whole video where he talk about he don't feel like he got a lot a life left left to live. That's why he lived reckless. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I get that he's sick, but that shouldn't be your mindset. I don't have a lot of life to live, so I just got to be out here living reckless. 
that's a quick way to end your life sooner than they, later. Like, what? <laughs> Listen, when I heard somebody, I saw somebody in the shade room comments call him future with a turban, I was gone. Like, send for me, Lord. But when you think about it, it's like, bro, you're creating broken homes. Like, I don't understand. It's so many people like, well, oh, he got the money. So now it's all about money. But I'm like, when y'all be on here, uh, then y'all get mad about child support cases. So I'm like, it's not... It's not all about money. That child needs time, nurturing, love, attention, and money is just not going to do it. Right. And then I'm like, you're leaving a single mother. I'm like, okay, if you pass away, I, I, for the life of me, I don't get it. And people are like, oh, he could be making a video for memories. So what the fuck that mean? And what if you don't pass away? I mean, you got at least, seven, you got seven children out here it requires time, attention, love, and support. Mm-hmm. Seven. And there is no way possible with your career and everything that you can spread yourself out that damn thin and you ain't got them by the same mother. Right. It'll be different if it would be a little different if you had them all in the same place. You don't. So I'm and like, has, you're going to put everything. The fact that just, a lot of them are wilding out girls. You said what? You Did anybody what? touch on the fact that a lot of them girls is wild or was on wild now or was wild now? I, no. oh, mm. I didn't even know that. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. All I'm going to say is that right there alone made it na- even more nasty to me. I'm sorry. The fact that a lot of them had or was on wild now, was a wild now girl at one point or he met them through like, meh. They don't sit good with me. I'm sorry. That's icky to me. Like, you supposed to be their boss. I don't... Mm. Yeah, that's... I didn't know that. That's... Yeah. <laughs> that makes it worse. That makes it very worse. And, like, a lot of those girls are younger and you just like, oh, let me go and have a baby. <sighs> oh, the whole situation. But I'm with you, though. That future with a turban, that, that, that fits. That fits. Yep. Because they literally are the same person. Neither okay. one of them have respect for women. And he all like, oh, and that's like you say, he are my black queens, my queens, my queens. And I'm, no, sir, you cannot preach that and not be about family. And I don't care what nobody say. Yeah, being married does not guarantee anything, but it helps. Right. Agreed. And, and I'm like, there's no way possible. He just had what did he have three babies together so there's no way possibly he's spreading himself where oh i'm here with this baby this baby that newborn phase is hard as fuck right and newborn and well infant and even raising children after that i'm like he has children that are older that require time and attention like it's just to me it's it's gross yeah i don't care what nobody say like oh he got the money but money just alone don't raise children and why y'all saying he got money now but as soon as a good child support case come up that he don't want to pay then it's gonna be well what are y'all always about money oh because you don't have time and so, that's, that's the funny thing is that that's what exactly if if one of them hit him with a high key child support case that would be the first ones and the people in the con- man they was just after him for the money to begin with blah blah what he out here giving it up to every woman on earth and having babies with every chick on earth but they was just after him for the child support like that's why i didn't fault the the chick future baby mama and people was coming at her talking about she was just she just that was her check baby blah 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 future got six seven eight nine kids before her what you mean that was just her check baby just because he was so because um he is irresponsible she was supposed to abort her child and then what was crazy about that is like when I just went and looked at the girl page, I'm like, she looked like she maintained it very well without him, but she wanted him to do his part as he should. Facts. Thank you. I'm like, but funny. y'all niggas are so fucking fuck boyish. It's just like, oh, she just got that baby for a chick. Okay. But she taking care of the baby by herself. So what chick is she getting from him? Exactly. He need to put he need to put in 
the same work that he put in to make that fucking baby, okay? Wow. Give me the coins. Since you don't want to be present. And look, beautiful girl, too. The beautiful little yeah. baby. I don't understand these. Y'all make these beautiful little babies and don't even want to be present in their life. Like, I don't get it. Trash. Trash, girl. All right, so let's move to some more trash. <laughs> oh, your boy Trick Daddy Dollars. Mm-hmm. Trick Daddy Dollars, Lord. He didn't he didn't got the beehive up upset. They they out here bombing the hell out of his restaurant right now and dropped the, the rating so fucking low. Woo, child. He didn't got on here. He said Beyonce can't sing and that Jay-Z is not the best rapper because he, he buys songs. Like, listen, I don't know what's going on with Trick. What are your thoughts? Listen, Trick needs to take that lupus medicine and stay off some drugs. Like, what I Because, of course, I stroll backwards. So I'm like, what the fuck did Trick stupid ass say this time? So I'm like, okay, let me go and look. Girl, he was like, and my mama was her senior coach and she been her, or not his mom, his auntie. Uh, she been coaching her. I'm like, but everybody heard love on top though, bro. I'm not understanding what you're saying. Like, what you mean? And it's just like, you know, people are like, well, you can't knock him for his opinion. Yes, the fuck you can if it's wrong. And you're a hater. Like, why are you even speaking about Beyonce? Why are you even speaking about Jay-Z? Like, bro, you got to stay in your line. And that ain't it. And then you like, I stand by it and blah, blah, blah. Of course you stand by it. You look like a Nestle Crunch. Of course you do. Like, he, think- he give me hater vibes. Just be honest. What I don't get though is that like it's not even because he said it was his unpopular, but it's not even an unpopular opinion anymore. Like it's literally people, that's how they go viral now. Shit on Beyonce. But my thing is, and I've never understood this. You don't have to be a Beyonce fan to acknowledge, you know what I'm saying, what she has done. Like for for people like out there, I, I compare it to like LeBron James. You don't have to be a LeBron James to acknowledge that, that man's uh, LeBron James fan to acknowledge that man's greatness. You can never right. not how great he has been for the sport, how athletic he is, how talented he is. You can you can pull all the stats you want, this or that, but you can't it. You know what I'm saying? Not acknowledge that man's greatness in that sport, and that's the same thing for Beyonce. You don't have to be a fan of hers to not be a hater. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you can, you can essentially say she's not my cup of tea, but she do work her ass off, and the girl can sing. Like I mean, give her credit where credit is due. That's all I'm saying. Listen, and that's what I understand about even you know when people hate LeBron James and Beyonce. It's like these people spend hours amongst hours amongst hours perfecting themselves and their craft. Like how can you not? Just to see, like, how LeBron James trains, um, to see how Beyonce trains her body to be ready for tour. Like, this takes so much willpower to be like, oh, I'm only going to eat 600 calories a day. 600! Like, I gotta be stomach virus sick for 600 calories. So it's like, trick daddy, go drink some Hennessy and just be I knew he look. I knew he lost the argument when he jumped over Usher and said Chris Brown was the uh, next best thing since Michael Jackson. Oh, word! Right, <laughs> we we doing oh, it? it is. <laughs> like, bro, you got a whole generational, like a generation right there that you just missed. Oh, you jumped right over Usher, like right. what? What we doing? <laughs> Did we forget Usher, right? Like, stop doing it. Y'all gonna quit. Listen, I like Chris. I do. In terms of his music, his outside situations. Ugh, 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 disgusting. But y'all gonna quit disrespecting Usher Raymond and stop acting like he don't exist. Let's not do this. And that's what I don't understand with, like, and these people, it'd be like Chris Brown will tell you his influence. And y'all see me like, oh, it's just Michael Jackson and Chris Brown. How? How? <laughs> and it's not like 
he did. So how y'all gonna skip over me? Like whole mess. The whole mess. All I'm gonna say is y'all stop being haters again. It's no longer an unpopular opinion. At this point, it's just tired. We get it. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to, like I said, you don't have to be a fan of Beyonce. Nobody is saying that you have to like her music or even listen to her music, but you can at least not be a hater and be honest and acknowledge her hard work that she's put in and her talent. She's talented. Let's be honest. She talented. Cut the bullshit. I'm just saying. Yep. And it, oh, he just irks my spirit, Lord Jesus. Like, <laughs> just looking at him, be like, first of all, you need to take better care of your skin and yourself. And then maybe you can speak on our good sis Beyonce. Um, and I know it's like people that would say, like, well, they shouldn't trade the man business where well, he needs to keep his mouth closed. <laughs> and I'm like, more than likely, Google and Yep, all them gonna go through there and delete everything. And delete. Uh huh. Anyway, so I'm like, he'll be all right. Yeah. All right. Next topic is let's talk this Usher and T Pain situation. Of course, the situation is that Usher was on a flight with T Pain. He had a flight attendant wake T Pain up out of his duty rest to tell him that he basically killed music with auto-tune. Um, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, it's cringeworthy for me. It's like, first of all, I don't wake me up out of my sleep for no bullshit. And second of all, I just think with, it was more of, I mean, for me, it was a difference because T-Pain can sing. So it wasn't like he was masking his this like his talent or something. He could sing. He made some fucking hits. I don't give a fuck with nobody say like T Pain for my club era was it. Buy you a drink. I, listen, was it so I'm like I feel like he created like a different, I guess I don't know, because I don't think he's always been around. So I'm not even gonna say he created it, but it's like he did something different and it, you know, caught on. And then I think for him, it was a little hypocritical because I'm like, you used auto-tune and oh my Ooh. God, oh, I don't know why you, and it took me to like reading the comments to be like, you know what he y'all no fuck me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I've, I've never understood the hate towards T-Pain at all. He literally, he found something that worked. He found his lane. He stuck to it and rolled that shit. That's what you're supposed to do in music. You know what I'm saying? Like, and 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 like you said, it's not like T Pain cannot actually sing. We've heard T Pain no auto tune. The man can sing. Okay, he can sing. He's got talent. But the fact of the matter is, is that when he saw that the auto tune thing worked, he took it. He wrote it and got made hits and money off it. I'm not gonna knock that man for that. And like you said, that T Pay era was an era, baby. It was a good time. So yeah. every time I think I'm like, Damn, buy you a drink? Like, I'm in love with a stripper. Like, like it was a good time. Okay. Right. <laughs> like, so I, don't, I don't understand. Like I said, to me, it was I know he was like, he didn't, he don't have any hard feelings. But I would feel a certain type of way because I was like, what you trying to say? And don't wake me up out of my foot sleep for no bullshit like this. No means. bullshit. Exactly. Look, I wish somebody would come wake me up off a plane. So, what? I'd be one of them disgruntled people hopping over seats and shit. Y'all gonna kick me off this flight today. <laughs> like, man, you on the no flight. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know, man. I, I Like I said, I was disappointed in Usher for that bullshit, especially since, like you said, he's used he rode the wave too. He jumped on that wave too and used auto tune. And not only that, like I said, people hate on T Pain, and I don't get. I, that's my whole situation with the whole. I don't understand people in the hating on folks like that. Like I feel like J Cole said it best on his new album. If you out here making jokes and laughing at millionaires, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what is your life? What are you spending your life doing, right? You know what I'm saying? Hey, you should be making millions. Like I said, now that's my, you know, love me some Mr. Raymond, but I'm like, bro, don't do that again. 
don't do it. Can you do use it. auto? Like, that just really hurts me for T Pine. Like, you gonna talk about me, then you gonna get on her and use my shit. Facts. All right, so let's jump into this whole make the stallion and the baby thing. So I saw this and I don't know, like there was so, there's so many different levels to it or layers to it that I feel like, I don't know. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll assess the situation and we'll get into it. So it's basically Meg the Stallion and the baby got into it after the baby released a record with Tory Lane did a video was promoting it, I guess, or he put it on his page or something. Meg unfollowed him. Um, and then him and Cardi oh got into it. Her, him and her oh and got into it online, and he now he's unfollowed her. I don't. Oh I mean, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? I mean, I'm not gonna knock her for being upset. Um, because I do think with things like it, where it comes down to, yeah. I mean, this one of just an argument that her and Tory Lanez had, like he's yeah. accused of shooting her. Um, I do think you have to pick sides in situations like that when it comes to people like abusing me or shit. Because if you shoot at me trying to kill me, then I feel like yeah, we draw the line. Um, and you have to pick sides. And I think for a little baby being from the hood or whatever he will understand that better than, you know, anybody. Um, so I wasn't mad at her about that. Um, one mad at her boyfriend about stepping in. I know a lot of people like, well, the baby that knocked out dudes and he'd have shot somebody, blah, blah, blah. He's the only shooter. And he's supposed, and at party, he's supposed to take up for his girl. Um, but I, I, I mean, I think it all, well, for me, it just shows that, listen, these dudes that we, we be want to hold up to a high standard and we're like, oh, we cool with them. They don't give a fuck. I mean, and the baby shows his work anyway because he hit women. He don't give a fuck. But he probably told you whatever he told you when y'all was working together in the studio, like, oh, I don't fuck with him and he lame and all this shit. And then he gonna work for him. So whatever. But I don't like the situation where like somebody pulled up a clip where they asked her why did she work with Cardi and she worked with Nicki Minaj and she was like, business is business. And people were like, oh, well now, you know, business is business. I do think it's different. Like, I don't know, for me, it's different, but anywho. What about yourself? So I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence and here's why. Because of the fact that I fully wholeheartedly, even though I don't fuck with Tory Lanez at all in this in this instance, you accused of shooting a woman in, in this house, um, we don't listen to Tory Lanez. I told you, I literally went through and made sure on my title, my Apple, don't even, don't even pull up one of his records or a record he featured on. He on my block list, uh, all of my little things. Like, I don't fuck with him. I don't want to support that in my house. You know what I'm saying? but at the same time it's like if you go if you if we take a step back and take that out of it and just look at the music business as a whole I, and again when we're not insiders so we don't know the full extent of their conversation or their quote-unquote friendship but if her and the baby aren't if, if they like friends friends you know what i'm saying like if they was just collaborators or people who work together as people in the industry do i mean can I, can you, can you as an artist just work with him like he's not your friend he's just someone i collaborated can you then be like can you then you know go on this whole may tell him who he can and cannot work with you know what i'm saying like i in in, in at the same time it's like i could get where she would want people to choose sides but uh -uh. Everybody that you work with is not your friend. So it's like, if I'm, if that's not my friend, if we just collaborators, we co-workers, can, do I really have the right to tell my other co-worker, well, this person did me wrong, so it's fuck him over here, so you can't fuck with him. Like, you, do, you see what I'm saying? Like, if they're just co-workers, then that's like me, if I was working with some random person at work and, you know, somebody did me wrong, being like, oh, that person did me wrong and expected my coworker to have my back on it. Like that coworker don't owe me shit. Yeah. 
So that's why that's why I'm like, I don't, it's hard to judge that situation because we don't know what their true relationship is behind closed doors. So we don't know how Megan and, you know, and the baby really are were behind closed doors if they were anything other than collaborate. My personal opinion, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna just insert myself in there, just get my personal opinion. Based on that, remember that little clip where his friend was dogging her and talking about she was ugly and shit like that. And he was in the background cackling and just letting it go on. That right there showed me everything I needed to know about the baby. That he literally just saw her as a coworker. Like we just gonna make these hits to, you know what I'm saying? That was enough for me to see that. But again, like I said, we don't know to the extent behind closed doors, the conversations that they've had, if they actually considered each other friends, but just outside looking in, that whole situation right there where his friend was dogging her and he was just in the background cackling and letting it go on, that was enough in my mind to be like, oh, so he don't really fuck with her, fuck with her. So I didn't expect much from him in terms of, oh, he ain't gonna, you know what I'm saying, him not working with Tory Lanez or him not doing a record with him. Because if, if for him, like you said, He's taking it the way that the in other people in it was like, well, business is business. That's my coworker. I collaborated with you, but I'm collaborating with him now. So fuck it. But again, we're not privy to the, the true behind the scenes. So we don't know. Um, for her, again, she has every right to feel any type of way that she fucking want to. She want to be like, well, fuck him too. Fuck him too, sis. I feel you. You have every right to do that. But at the same time, it's like outside looking in, I don't know if, I can be like you said. It, if if I can be like, well, you know, how is business not just business? I'm just that's just her coworker. Who is she to tell her other coworkers uh, they can and can't work with? Yeah, I get that part. Like I just like I said, I will, I don't expect much from him. Maybe just yeah. that's is that that's what I'm saying. I didn't expect much from him anyway, so that's why I did. But clearly, she maybe she did, or maybe she felt that the relationship was more than it was because yeah. like I said for me that video where he was letting his friends dog her out and she would just and just sit that would have been it for me I would have known then oh that's not my friend he don't fuck with me you know what I'm saying because you're not gonna just sit around and have a group of people talking shit about me and just be silent you know what I'm saying not say nothing be cackling with him but now we're not cool then yeah. and I mean I think that goes for her and it's I know it's like rough learning these lessons we like bro you probably ain't got no real friends in the industry right like maybe outside of the industry but don't expect shit from people in the inside like I'm like I don't know it's like I want somebody to maybe you know but you remember how like Oprah did with Beyonce and Jay-Z she kind of took them under their wing to be like okay certain stuff you don't respond to and I guess you kind of like train them like listen if I take an interview it's gonna be strictly under my terms like I wish somebody would do that for her like a mentor yeah and be like this is how you kind of you know you have to navigate there's no you know what I'm saying get your paper and move on well I mean because I mean because again when you get in situations like that that's how it allows you, I agree with you because I, you can definitely tell that she lacks a mentor. She doesn't have that in the industry because like you said, people were able to bring up the contradiction in, in um, even though the situations, like I'm with you on that. I don't compare the situations. I think they're different because here you have an actual criminal case where this man shot at a woman. But in the instance, if you just look at it in terms of business, why you know what i'm saying again you you work with you know cardi who physically you know attacked nikki as well and you know it, it was in it in for you was business was business so at the same time it's like you looked at nikki and cardi as your co-workers and i'm going to collaborate with whoever i want to so the baby did the same thing like you're my co-worker i collaborated with you i'm gonna collaborate with him that's it is what it is. It's just business. It's just money. And I think that if she had a mentor or she had someone in the industry telling her, like, you can't move like this or you can't move in the sense of thinking that everybody is your friend. 
because nobody, everybody else in the business is looking at it just like the baby is looking at this business. I collaborated with you. I'm gonna collaborate with him. If I'm gonna get coins off this record, I'm getting coins off this record. I'm getting, you know what I'm saying? This, this, that, and that, whatever. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna inherit your situations or your beef or your, you know what I'm saying? Just because you don't fuck with them. I don't fuck with them. Cause look, cause look at what happened with the city girls. Remember when Cardi and, um, or with Lil Yachty, when Cardi and Nikki was having a whole situation and everybody was like, staying out of it they was they jumped on well we riding with cardi we gotta take cardi side and now here they on the internet well can nikki unblock me i didn't mean it was just bit you see what i'm saying like it's like if y'all had mentors in the industry they would have told y'all it's just like in real life right with couple disputes how people tell you if you friends with two people and they a couple and they get into it they'd be like don't choose sides because the moment that they get back together you're gonna be the one looking like shit face yeah Yep. So I don't know. I wish the best for her, but be like, girl. I don't know. And I think it may be hard for her to accept and be like, you think you got these good relationships with these people and it ain't as good as you think. It ain't what it is. Exactly. That's I I think you are I think you're definitely spot on though. She does need a mentor. She does need somebody in the industry who's willing to kind of take her under their wing and be like this is how you need to move in this industry or this is how you really need to see this shit. It's business. It's work. Don't be looking as these people as your actual friends or family outside of the friends or family that you have outside of this. Look at, I mean, if you look at all of the most successful artists or the most successful people, they have their teams of friends, family, and things like that. And they, yeah, they collaborate or they work with other people, you know, in the business, but they don't consider those people anything other than collaborators. When I see you, we cool, we can dap it up, whatever, but we're not friends. We're just work co-workers. We in the same business and we work together. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Let's move into this final situation. This one was a tough one for me. I, I saw it and I didn't know if I wanted to even talk about it. But since you want to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. Um, the uh, Sean King, Samir, Ri- uh, Samir Rice's, Tamir Rice's mom. Um, so essentially, um, if you remember, Tamir Rice's mom was kind of going off on all activists and saying, that everybody from Tamika Mallory to Sean King to Benjamin Crump, Lee Garrett, et cetera, et cetera, that they were, you know, pocketing money, profiting off of her, et cetera, et cetera. Then uh, apparently her and Sean King had a conversation. He um, talked about it on his podcast about the conversation that they had. He did a podcast episode and he talked about it on there, et cetera, et cetera. And then I, I didn't hear, I saw in comments, somebody said Amanda, uh, Amanda Seals, Seals um, compliment, uh, she talked about it or she went on one of her things about it. I didn't see it. So I don't, I don't, I can't comment on that part of it. So I'll leave that to you, but give me your take on, on the situation. Um, so after doing my research with Sean King, at first I was like, oh yeah, you know, he cool, blah, blah, blah. Not cool. Will not ever give him another dime. And I think we talked about this before um, when it first came out that yeah, activists, this their job. They deserve compensation. But I don't think they deserve the compensation where it takes everything from their family because it gives me Red Cross vibes. You know, where you had them you know, billions for Haiti and only, I think for every dollar, only 40 cents made it to the island. They only built like 13 houses or something like that. So I believe her when she say, okay, I didn't receive anything. And if you're going to fundraise for that, then she should receive it. Like no if, ands, or buts, or, oh, we had to do this, or it's going to... She should receive the money because that's what people are giving for. I'm not giving for you. Um, and I think a lot of times with being an activist, you do have to take that. You have six and seven mansions and all that. 
it, it it screams fraud or scammy. It's like, so how are you making this much cash? And I know with Sean King, he has other avenues of income, but I just think for him, he's been on the investigation too many times of where the money goes for where there's smoke, there's fire. Like this is not his first time being saying like, bro, it's fraud. Um, he was with Black Lives Matter at first. He disassociated himself with that. And it was a whole scandal about money. I don't know. Like, and Amanda Seal, she was like, yeah, I have my, basically she said she has her reservations about um, Sean King. And she spoke out about him before. But Tamir Rice's mother, um, it's all of a sudden. And I'm like, but the lady has been spoke about it. And... I just feel like with her, like she always speaks out of turn. Some like she's right about one to two times a year. Then the rest of it, she just speak out of turn. And like, I don't know. I just don't like Sean King. Like, and I know people like, oh, he brings spotlight. It's just depending upon where you get your news from. If you looking at at Sean King only to bring spotlight towards something, that's where you get your news from. That's where you're going to see it. You know, it seems like it's breaking news, but it's out there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, I just really feel like if you raise the money for a victim, that victim's family should get most of the money. Not half, most. And I, I don't know. I really feel like they should get all of this to be us. Because that's who you raise the money for. If you're not up front saying, hey, I'm going to, if I raise a million dollars, I'm going to take 10%, then you should be raising money. Right. So that's just my thing. So I sat on this one. And that's why I said this was a hard one for me. Um, because I didn't, I wasn't sure I wanted to talk about it because it's it's hard in that, like you have to remember it's a grieving mom. Um, she lost her, her child, her son's never coming back. So you have to give grace in that situation. And then at the same at the same time, you also have to, you have to look at the math. Like in a lot of these situations, the math ain't mathing. And, and in this situation, the math isn't mathing. Um, because she does, she does admit to take getting the money, to getting money from them. Um, she admitted that Ben Crump gave her the money and that she she even still to this day works with Ben Crump. She admitted that Sean gave her the money. Now it's it's almost like it's it's like she she throws out, she says all of these things, but then there's never any, she doesn't back it up with anything. And by and, and hear me out, in us giving her the grace, we don't care. We just roll with it because it's his she got every right to it. She lost her son. She got every right to feel the way that she wants to feel. But then at the same time, I can't then knock a person who, if you're throwing those allegations at them, I can't knock Ben Crump for then wanting to, okay, she's saying these allegations against me. I got to go out of my way and defend it and show that I didn't do that. I can't not, because people were saying, well, Sean King shouldn't have talked about it or he shouldn't have posted. But I mean, if you're throwing allegations at my name saying that I'm stealing, if people are constantly telling, throwing allegations say that, saying that I'm stealing, then if I go in and I, and I show the receipts, I post the receipts and all this and that, then it's like, can I really be mad at him or mad at anybody for attempting to defend themselves? Because I mean, I think that that's the, the, the activist part, the struggle, right? Is that a lot of them, that's they do this work right and a lot of people feel like it should be that they all should be poor and that they should be struggling you know what i'm saying that they shouldn't get paid for it that's one instance of it that mm-hmm. i feel like I, and, and and i think that we can both agree on that that i think that a, a lot of people's mindset is that if they see someone is termed a quote-unquote activist they feel like they should be poor i really i genuinely think that that's a lot of people's assumption they think that if they're out here doing the work that they should be doing it for free. And I'm just like, why? I mean, you should get paid for the work that you do. Why shouldn't they receive compensation for the work that they do? But again, that's different mindset. So I can't, you know what I'm saying? Some people, like I said, most, I think a vast majority of people believe that activists shouldn't make any money, that they should be poor. 
um, or that they should have other avenues or careers outside of that. But then I also think it's a double-edged sword because look at with Tamika Mallory, right? People were are upset because she was in a Cadillac commercial or because, you know what I'm saying, she um, has a book deal or a television deal or something like that coming up in, in the works. And I'm like, but y'all said y'all didn't want her to make money from being an activist. So if she goes out here and she getting other streams of income and other avenues of income, y'all mad at that too? You, do, you see what I'm saying? So I don't, so that that's that part is hard for me because I'm like, I don't have the mentality of believing that activists shouldn't get paid for what they do. It's work. It's hard work. It's and, and to be honest with you, it's a lot of the work that a lot of us ain't willing to do. A lot of us are just like, just tell me where to donate and I'll donate some money and then I've done my part. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us aren't even willing to go out to a protest or to go out to, you know, we don't fit. Just tell me where to donate. I'll put my money there. I'm part of the cops, which isn't a bad thing. Hey, because every every little bit helps. Any way you choose to be a part of the, the you know, be a part of the mission, any whether that's giving money, whether that's giving time, whether that's using your voice, your art, whatever, whatever you put in towards the goal, I'm here for it. Um, even if it's just surviving, if you know what I'm saying, it's just living in this world and surviving. I'm here for that as well. If it's protecting your own mental health, I'm here for that as well. But I just think that in this instance, that's why I say it's a tough one for me in this situation, just because the math ain't math in. Like if you say you telling in these posts you didn't receive the money, but then at the same time you're saying that you did receive the money. And then they showing the receipts that you got the money and you still working with them. I, like I, it's confusing to me. And I just feel like, that's why I feel like I'm just gonna, I'm gonna step back from it and be like, I'm just gonna give her her grace to to grieve this and go through it however she wants to, to go through it. She got, you know what I'm saying? Because she lost her child. I'm not gonna tell nobody how to feel, what to say, not to have any type of outburst, not to grieve in whatever way that they want to grieve but at the same time I can't hold somebody else if you're on the other end of that grief if you're the one being attacked I can't hold them for being like okay but she's coming at my character so I got to defend myself against that or I got to show people that that's not the truth yeah so I don't know yeah it's, I, it's, I said it's a tough it's tough the whole yeah, situation is tough like I don't know like I feel like like I honestly I like Lee um Mary I do follow him um at one point I was following Sean King the only like I said the thing I have with Sean King is that I just feel like he overall he's a fucking frog and I want that like he has a couple of allegations against him like it's not just one here one day. it's it's a lot and like I normally don't give him, but I also think again it goes back to make sure you know where you're donating because I have mm-hmm. donated to him before. But I mean, I guess we'll see in the future. Like I, I don't know. Like, and I'm thinking like with Benjamin Crump, I'm like, well, shit, how could he not give you the money when he was your attorney? But yeah, I watched the whole little uh, expose about the attorneys and lawsuits, and it yeah, it was horrible. But yeah, I just I wish the best for her, and there might be some issues there. But yeah, yeah it, it'd be interesting to see, I guess, because we, like I said, I don't really question Billy McCrum because of so much of the legal aspect of it, and it has to go through like trustees and all this. But like I said, with Sean King, I just feel like it's just too much. And how much did you raise? Because I think with his receipts. You show like, oh, I gave her money, but how much did you raise? Because I, I feel like saying. if you mm-hmm. raise a million dollars and you gave her a hundred thousand, no, 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 no. Right. And yeah. even when he like, he's just cringeworthy as fuck when he had black people give it to his white brother. Like, no. Mm. It's definitely like I said, it's 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 a it's a tough line to walk. I'll say that it's a tough mm-hmm. line for anybody to walk it's a reason that's a reason why like I'll say that regardless of who the person is if they label themselves an activist 
it's it that's why i wouldn't i would never put myself in that would want to be in that arena because that's a tough line to walk you know what I mean? You have to imagine constantly facing, especially because you're dealing with money. So you constantly going to be facing allegations from people um, if they don't get the justice that they feel like that. You know what I mean? It's just so many layers upon layers upon layers of things that you would have to go through. I'm not built for it. Um, so I, I'll never knock anybody who step in that arena and, and give it a try and go through it. I just think that as we go forward, I think that we have to start, I think we have to figure out, start defining the roles a little bit better because it's the same situation, remember, with Black, in, in, in doing our own research, because remember, it's the same situation with Black Lives Matter um, where the, the woman was being acute. People were asking, where was the money going? And so she finally, she's finally stepped down or whatever, stepped away from it um, because she, you know, she had all these houses and et cetera, et cetera. For me, I never once, you know, she said she didn't take the money. Like I say, I, I'm not going to down no black woman and say that she out here stealing funds or say that because she got luxury homes that she ain't supposed to. Because again, I don't live in that mindset where I believe just because someone chooses the career as an activist that that ne ne negates that they're supposed to be poor or be living in poverty. I don't, I don't live in that. I don't believe that Black people don't deserve luxury or just because, like I said, it's just because you're an activist that they're supposed to be living in poverty. I don't believe in that. But at the same time, for me, I did my own research and, and, and we've said it several times. That's why I've never donated to Black Lives Matter, the organization, because I, they could never, there was never anything on their website or anything I ever saw that showed me where the money was going to. So aside from using it as a research tool to linked to other organizations that were in my local area or things like that, where I could follow the money and know where my money was going. And therefore that's why I donated to them. Um, I, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, but at the same time, I'm not going to go up on these, you know, I'm not going to Fox news about another black person. I'm just not, I'm not going to be, well, you're stealing. where did the money go? You got that. You got on them homes. So of course you got to be stealing that money. No, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. It's not me. It's not in my character, but nonetheless. Aside from that, I think that's all we have for hot topics, yeah? Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and move into the relationship portion of the show. Okay. And we do have one relationship question. It's more like you said it's a lifestyle question. Go yeah, ahead and it to us. Let's see. Um, how did your relationship with your mom impact the way you love other women? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. That's a tough question because I don't really know the answer to that. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, because like me and my mom have a good relationship. You know, we we cool. We butt heads though, obviously as mother and daughters do. I don't know though because it's like. But she and I are so vastly different at the same time, too. I don't know that we approach situations differently. So maybe that's how is because I, I noticed the differences in us and our differences in our approaches. So I guess in how she handles her relationships with other women, I necessarily don't handle them the same way. I, I don't know. It's tough because, again, me and my mom are so vastly <laughs> different. <laughs> um, there with you so it's like it's hard because it's like even even in just all of her relationships are so different from mine just because even in the the friend set that I choose versus she chooses like it's it's so hard it's different but I guess I I feel like maybe I've just learned to you know in our own relationship try to communicate um, better with women communicate with other be nice um you know have a tribe ha you know what I mean be respectful of other women I don't police other women don't judge other women so I guess like the I, I feel like that's all sounds cliche but essentially it's where I'm at what about you um I think for me I'm with like me and my mom we are literally night and day my brother is more like my mom than I am mm -hmm. but 
I guess with our relationship, like I do, I tell my mom a lot. I don't tell her everything, um, but I do tell her a lot. Um, but just her being supportive um, taught me how to like support other women. Even like when I've done some, like, when I say stupid <laughs> shit or, you know, just breakups and she like, oh, I'm coming, you know, and just sit with you. Just actually like being that support for a woman and not being in competition and things like that. Um, my mom has like one very good friend. Um, and like just knowing how to be a friend and be supportive, um, loving. I will say one like, I guess negative thing um, is passive aggressiveness. Like I don't like that. And like a lot of women in my family, I don't care if y'all listen to this, are passive aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> where like they will literally and that's one thing that I was like I never want to do in none of my friendships is that I did watch my mom my aunties and older cousins be like my mom would talk on the phone and she'd be like oh yeah yeah they're so messed up and blah 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 and they'll be talking about you know auntie then the auntie called the phone to tell her side of the story and I'm like Y'all know y'all could have just called each other and worked this out. And now you have everybody in y'all dispute. It's not that big of a thing. And the real story is not being told. Right. You know, so I'm like, when I got older, I vowed that I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be passive aggressive. You know, if I got a problem, like I had a problem with one of my cousins, I just called. I was like, did you say A, B, and C? And she was like, well, I did say A, but I didn't say B and C and blah. This is why I said A. And it was so much better for our relationship to be like, you know what? I didn't say this, but I understood the reason why she said A. Hey. And we just moved on from there. But I'm like, when you got everybody in the sauce and, you know, it ain't right, it's just a fucking mess. So I'm like, that was one of the things that I learned that I'm like, I'm not going to do with my friends. Right. Well, it makes good sense. It makes good sense. I like that. All right. Well, I don't have a relationship question this week. <laughs> So (laughs) that's going to move us into our next segment, which is new books, TV, and movies, et cetera, things of that nature. What do you got to share with the class today? Um, So TV, I have just started Manifest. I do have to go back and um, I I want to go back and like watch it from beginning again um, because I kind of just put it on as like, I guess like a time filler. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I need to be doing this, but I'm just going to go ahead and watch this show. And I was like, damn, this is actually good. So I do want to go back and rewatch it. So far, so good. No complaints. Um, It does keep you intrigued because I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? Like, what the time? I want to know why the time span, you know, what happened. Um, And another show I watched is on Netflix. Is it on Netflix or Hulu? It's on Hulu. It's called Hustler and the Housewife. Mm -hmm. Listen, when I say, and that was the reason why I brought up about like Benjamin Crook, the whole thing about, okay, you know, he's an attorney, they have to go through all this legal shit. But it's one of the housewives of Beverly Hills. Her husband literally spent his client's money from lawsuits. Oh, wow. Like no money. Well, supposedly he doesn't have any money. Of course, you know, rich people do shiesty ass shit. Um, so him and his wife at the end, when he kind of got caught up into it, um, they ended up going through like, oh, we're going through a divorce. And of course, he transferred some assets to her quote unquote company. But I mean, it was really heartbreaking because one guy, um, he got money because a faulty gas line was under his home and it exploded. Oh, God. So he will always need like medical attention, like far as his skin grafting and all of this. And like, it's nothing. Like he spent millions upon millions of dollars. Like not just, he had, of course, some small clients, but he had like high dollar, like I'm storing a whole electrical company in California type clients. And I think they were saying some around like in like the two, $300 million that he spent of other people's money so yeah it's yeah I was like I would be pissed off and it again it all happened because one lady lost her son well the son sued a company he never got the money but he ended up dying in a car accident so that you know uncovered everything because it's like where's his money wow so yeah it, it it's 
That's it's a whole ridiculous. mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, for the whole like housewife franchise, I was like, you would think Teresa, what is it, Gudis, the dice or whatever her name is, right? It was like the big scandal. This is like, yeah, the cake. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but it it was a good show, and I think it was like an hour. It wasn't very long. But okay. It's not for me. No music or TV. I mean, or movies or books. Okay. Um. So on my end. Um, I we I started talking about this when it first the uh, the new season had first started airing and then I kind of fell off on it. But I did finish for all those out there. I did finish Pose. Um, I watched through um, the final season um, through the series finale. Um, my my first critique of the final season still stands. It definitely still felt, felt rushed. But I get it. Again, COVID. A lot of these COVID seasons were rushed. Um, they had to to make a lot of decisions in terms of like filming and everything like that. But I will say that the final, aside from like the first, very first episode of the season, um, which I said was because they tried to compact too much into that first episode. Aside from that, every episode after that really gave something. The They gave an episode centric on Pray Tell, where Pray Tell had to fit you know, face that he was dying. He went home to his mother and all of that and let them know um, about him dying and what his final wishes were going to be, et cetera, et cetera. We got to see a Electra-centric episode. So we got to see Electra from the beginning, originally how she came to, you know, start the House of Abundance. We got to see when she got all of her kids. It was a beautiful thing. We got the we got Angel and Angel and Poppy's wedding, which was beautiful. It was such a good episode to see. I loved it to pieces. But y'all know I love me some Angel and Poppy anyway. So that episode was amazing. Finally seeing her, um, recognizing that this was her chance to be a mom, you know, um, because essentially she, aside from maybe adoption and things like that, she would never essentially be able to have a traditional family but, you know, with him being a father and finding that out and, you know, taking in his son, they were going to be a family. And that was her chance to have that. And then just seeing the end after they get married, they're on vacation. They have their whole little family on their honeymoon, playing on the beach and stuff. It was just beautiful. It was good to see that type of representation, to see a trans woman being loved on because she, you know, because he loved her just because that was his woman that was his wife he loved her it was a good story I that's why I've always loved Angel and Poppy in that and then the final episode baby so I had already prepared myself for pray tell to die um I I prepared it I knew he was gonna die like I knew somebody was gonna die I I you know what I mean like I and I expected it to be pray just because of the fact that a part of the, the, a main part of his story, more than Blanca's, even though they focused on Blanca having HIV, a main part of um, Prey's story was him getting AIDS and him facing his mortality, et cetera, et cetera. But God damn it, in that final episode, they knew they was trying to get us to cry because I think a lot of us expected that Prey was going to die. But their asses, they tricked us into believing that Prey was going to live because he got into the trial. He was getting the new meds. He was living. Um, he was surviving and then next thing you know he dies because and we find out the reason he died is because he um he gave Ricky because in the sad part and that's and that's something that I love that this show highlighted because it still goes on today is that in the black and brown communities um they have to share meds because a lot of the time the same um, med medicines that are afforded to our white counterparts or to other um, other counterparts they are you know they get the the top of the line like you saw in the show where they were doing those the AIDS trials for the new drugs that new cocktail um, the white the white AIDS patients were they were able to get into the trial no problem but they had to fight to even get Blanca and Prey into the trial and they were the only two black people that were even allowed in it um and 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 so that's where you saw with Ricky Ricky developed the rash he was getting ready to die so pray instead you know 
was telling him lies saying, well, I got extra meds, but in turns, he was actually giving Ricky his meds for him to live because he loved uh, Ricky um, because Ricky saw him as not just pray tell, you know, our Godfather, um, our father, you know, our house father, he loved pray as the man. And um, that was a beautiful thing, but damn it, you pose creators. Cause I was like, I'm prepared. I ain't gonna cry. God damn it, when Prey died, I cry so hard. I cry like <laughs> my little thug tears. I was so, I was like, oh, but y'all, y'all had me thinking Prey was gonna live. He died, baby. But um, I loved his sentiment though, where he had these lockets. And I was like, shit, I might do this. But then again, I don't know if I could trust y'all ignorant asses. But um, he had these lockets made up where he brought um, for all his special people and he put a piece of he had them put a piece of his ashes in the locket and he gave them to all the people who are special in his life and said so this way y'all can always have a piece of me with you and I was like that is such a beautiful sentiment um to pass on to people because a lot of times when you have your ashes a lot of time either your fam somebody in your family keeps them or you your wishes are to have them spread but I think that that's a beautiful sentiment of giving everybody who meant really allowing people in your death to know how much they meant to you because this locket is giving you literally a piece of me you know what I mean like that's a beautiful sentiment in my opinion but all in all Pose gave what it needed to give um I love that series I love the representation in it I love the the you know the the culture that they highlighted in ballroom culture uh, because in all honesty you know, ballroom, house, all of that came from Black gay, you know, the Black LGBTQ plus I, you know, all of the letters, because baby, there's a lot of letters now, but um, that came from our, you know, derived from that culture, and they don't really get the credit or the just due that they deserve, so I definitely love that Pose highlighted that. I love that Pose really touched on the, a lot of the topics that are going on around lately in terms of you know the the brutal murdering of black and brown trans women um just the 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 fight that they have to face against people feeling like somehow they infringe on women I I don't really understand that either but again I just feel like it was just an eye opener it's just like I said representation matters so it was just a brilliantly put together show really well done um, a really great season finale. Um, I'm sorry, series finale. I love that they ended on my favorite Whitney Houston song, um, Your Love Is My Love. Um, it was just a beautiful touch. It really, it really ended the the series in a beautiful way, just showing that life continues, that life goes on, that there will be more houses, more children, more mothers, more father, you know what I mean? Like that community will continue to thrive and go forward and it was a beautiful sentiment. So loved it. And also kind of sticking in that regard. Um, I told you guys I was going to watch Love, Victor, um, season two on Hulu. I checked it out. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I liked season one, but I loved season two. Season two was so, so good. Like you really get to see, they really got to what I wanted them to get to, which was the difference and um, because a lot of times we see shows from the white, very white gay perspective, gay man perspective, this gave you from, you know, a person of color's perspective. And here you had this Hispanic kid who deeply religious Catholic family, and he comes out as gay and you see his father really, and, 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 and that was what I love the juxtaposition of it. You saw his father really like, okay, my son's gay, but I'm going to figure this out because that's my son. And you know what I mean? Like you see him working through it, but it, it's really the mom who has the the hardest time because she's so tied to the church. And, um, you know, they're telling her he's wrong and that being gay is wrong. And so she's the one who has the, and you really get to see that in, in the impact, because let's be honest, in the black and brown community, religion pay, plays a huge part in a lot of our community in our communities and it plays a huge part in you know especially in the the lbg2q community it plays a huge part in a lot of them fears about coming out 
um, about being accepted. So you really get to see that that juxtaposition in in season two. And I really love that. They also introduce another uh, person of color, um, gay character, and he is Muslim. And um, you get to see, um, because the, the Hispanic has a boyfriend, um, that's what the second season focuses on, and his boyfriend is white. But the um, the Muslim guy looks to, you know, the Hispanic guy as kind of like a mentor. Um, if you watch the series, it'll make sense to you a little bit more. But you really get to see the difference in, um, because the, the Hispanic guy and the Muslim guy, they they have conversations and they relate so much better. And like, there's this conversation where they have, um, where the, the, the Hispanic guys, Victor, his boyfriend and him get in a fight and the Muslim guy, he already knew, um, his name is Rahim. He already knew from fact, he was like, oh, so he's white, basically, you know, he coming from that white guy. He don't get it because he's a white guy. And, and, um, and Victor was like, exactly. Like, he just doesn't get it. He doesn't understand the the difference in, you know, how important religion is to our Hispanic heritage and da, 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 da. and and um, Rahim was like, well, why would he? You know what I mean? Like he 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 comes from that privilege. You know, there's that white privilege involved in it. And I love the aspect of when you get to see in shows like this where they touch on the difference in race as well, because I think a lot of the times people when they think of the LBGTQ plus community. They think that because they already deal with so much oppression that there isn't racism still there or hidden within it. And I love the fact that you get to see some of those tropes in that show. All in all, really, really, really good show. Really good season two. I'm hoping they get a season three. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I definitely recommend it. Okay. All right. So that is all I got on my end because I haven't listened to any new muse oh yes I did yes I did I listened to Wale's new record Angles with Chris Brown I will say I like the sample they used the I need a girl sample but you know I love I just it's hard for me to fucking critique Wale because damn it I love Wale (laughs) um but it's a good record so I would recommend that too as well to check that out all right so that's all I got on my end you have anything else on your end All right, well, then I'm going to jump into the nerd moment of the week so that we can kind of wrap up the show. All right, so the nerd moment this week essentially is just some quick hitters, some quick reminders. The next season premiere dates have been released for Batwomen and Legends of tomorrow. They'll be premiering in October, The Flash will have its season eight premiere in November, kicking off with a five um, ep- cross- five episode crossover um, that'll take place at the beginning of their season. Also, Sony's Villain Universe, which um, was, if, if you've seen um, Venom, that was kind of the first installment of that. The second installment is Morpheus. That will still be premiering in January, 2022, despite what Tyrese said about it supposedly coming out in October. No, it will be coming out in January of 2022. And no, it is not part of Marvel. It is part of the Sony villain universe. Sorry, Tyrese, we love you, but stop stop giving out false information. Lastly, um, Loki, it premiered on Disney+. Plus. It's had a couple of shows, I think maybe two or three, might be on episode four, I don't know. But obviously, you can check that out on Disney+. Plus. And finally, it's being reported that Grant Gustin will have a cameo in the Flash movie. Not surprising, it did when we got the cameo from Ezra in the crossover, um, Crisis crossover, it blew up and people loved it so much. So I'm not surprised that he'll be making a cameo in the Flash movie. It's good, biz- it's good for business all around for DC if he does, so... Um, I I believe that one, even though they say it's a rumor, I believe that one to be true. Outside of that, that's all I got. Have nothing else. You know, that's the nerd moment for this week. Anything else on your end, Fallon Deanne? Nothing else for me. All right, fantastic. Well, I want to thank you guys as usual for listening and hope you have a good night. Good night, guys. Good night.